let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about solar geothermal heating, especially for a greenhouse, but you can use this for a house or a garage too. And we're going to do this for about $2,000, plus the radiant heat floor to disperse the heat. What? Wait, how is that possible? That's huge savings up front and ongoing on a geothermal heating system. Geothermal heating install usually costs tens of thousands of dollars. How the hell am I going to do this for about two grand? Oh yeah, and it takes less than 100 watts to run too. That's an incredible investment that will use less energy and cost less than one or two years of a conventional geothermal heating system to build. How? I'm going to do this a little differently. I'm going to use things like air creep, evacuated tube arrays, or concentrated solar parabolic troughs, water tubing, and some simple pumps. That's about it. Okay, maybe some clamps and such, but that's the bulk of it. Now, if you know anything about geothermal heating, I should have your attention at this point. That's an investment worth looking at. So when we say solar geothermal, it's not the conventional geothermal most people are used to talking about. Yeah, they're similar, but there's some very key differences. The real term for this should be solar geo battery. Yes, you could charge a big battery and use a heat pump from a large solar photovoltaic system and run a conventional solar geothermal heating system. But if you follow my videos, there's a theme, simple, and cheap. So how are we going to build a solar geothermal heating system simple and cheap? Does such a thing even exist? The answer is a resounding yes. And greenhouse climate batteries are a simple version of this, but most climate batteries use air. I want to up the efficiency here and make a liquid-based system for charging and heating the greenhouse. What I also like about a liquid system is that you can build it beside your greenhouse so that you can add this system to almost any greenhouse, house, or garage, simply by adding a simple radiant heat floor, something I did with four by eight insulation sheets, sand, some pecs, and concrete sidewalk blocks, simple. Okay, let's explain this in detail. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel, and we have piles of other videos on greenhouses, heating greenhouses and growing that you can check out in our archives. Also, you know, I got to plug you for the like and subscribe and hitting that bell. But the reason you want to do that is that the YouTube algorithm will suggest you videos on the home page and on the right hand side, which you've probably seen before. And the more videos like this that you hit like, subscribe and the bell on, the more YouTube will suggest similar videos to this that you can watch. So it's your choice. Either you hit like, subscribe and that bell, or you're going to watch more Kardashians. So a standard geothermal heating system, the ones that we have here in Manitoba, where I live, um, run with ground temperatures at about five degrees Celsius, eight feet down. And they use a heat pump to multiply that heat. And they work, but heat pumps require a lot of electricity. Now, nowhere near as much electricity as direct electric heating, often half or one third the electricity of electric heating but it's still a lot of electricity and that costs money. I know, I know you can add a solar system to this and run the heat pump and it'll work great, but adding a photovoltaic solar system with full battery bank large enough to run a heat pump 24 seven is a large solar system and a lot of batteries. And batteries are very expensive. I'd suggest that solar system right now would cost in excess of $10,000, probably closer to $20,000 if done cheaply, and that's just for the geothermal heat pump to run all the time. And that's a do-it-yourself system too. A contracted system like that might be $30,000, plus the furnace heat pump system in your house, which those run at least $8,000 or more, but most likely many, many thousands of dollars more. So how on earth am I gonna do this for about 2,000 bucks? Am I crazy? Okay, here's the parts list. We got tubing and I'm guessing that's gonna be in around $300 range. Pumps about 200 bucks. Evacuated tubes, if you look on Alibaba, um, are running about 300 bucks each or 1180 bucks for four of them. A glycol, maybe a hundred bucks. Concrete, 200 bucks, that's to make your air crete. 
and Seven Nation Ditch Dish Detergent, um, 20 bucks. I mean, you can buy the proper Aircrete um, type stuff and it might buy you $40, but $20 is a decent price to consider when looking at this. Okay, we start by installing PEX in the ground. Now, I say PEX, but you can use underground rated plastic pipe, which isn't all that different in cost. It's probably better to use the underground piping, to be honest, we want this to last. Um, I didn't include the cost of an excavator because the fact is you can dig with a shovel. It's just that we're all too lazy to do that, but it's possible. And before you come up with any reasons in the comments why you need an excavator, make sure you concede that you could have done it with a shovel. And the extra thousand dollars or so cost to rent a tractor or excavator is just a lazy fee. So yes, some of you are going to brag and that you already own a tractor or an excavator, and that's great. Good for you. You're so lucky. But back to reality. A standard geothermal dig is long, often two to 300 feet out from your greenhouse, garage or house. And it's great if you're relying on only Mother Nature's ground temperature to heat the lines. It regenerates quickly, and when you use a heat pump, it's the most efficient way to do this. But when you're using a solar-boosted geothermal system, we have to rethink things. A solar-boosted geo battery system should be a square or cylinder shape into the ground, not run out long. The lines should be coiled to better use the earth as an energy storage device and spaced in between the input and output lines input lines coming from evacuated tube arrays or parabolic mirrors and output lines going to your greenhouse, house or garage. Now, you can put the pipes in the ground, but, and this will work, but if you want a lot more efficiency, you need to add insulation. Insulation can be a tricky thing in the ground. It can get wet, it can break down, bugs and microbes can be an issue, but there is a material that's cheap and immune to most of that. It's called aircrete. On YouTube, you see lots of people using aircrete as a building material. But although they mention this, they don't focus on what I think is the most important attribute of aircrete, and that's insulation. The bottom of the pit can easily be filled with aircrete, five to eight inches of it or more, and the walls could be lined with panels made from aircrete. The top, like the bottom, could be easily poured with another eight inches or more of aircrete, making an insulated sealed container for heat. For even better energy retention, one could put a layer of plastic around the aircrete to stop groundwater from seeping in and re reducing your heat. The insulation on a small system allows this small system to compete with the larger non-insulated systems like Drake Landing in Alberta that relies on massive volume of heated material rather than insulation to hold the heat longer. To generate heat, you need something like an evacuated tube array or a parabolic trough that can heat up water from the sun and inject it into the ground. I suggest a small photovoltaic powered pump here on the evacuated tube because it'll work when it's sunny and stop pumping when it isn't. The evacuated tubes only produce heat when it's sunny, so you don't want to inject cold liquid into your geo battery when it's nighttime. This kind of solar pump is cheap. Now, you have a solar heater for your geo battery that will pump heat all spring, summer, and fall into the ground, and you could draw that heat out in the winter as, you, as your evacuated tubes will continue to pump heat into your geo battery even in the winter as well. This is the basis of a seasonal solar heating system, as you need the summer heat in this system as a starting point for the winter. Okay, the efficiency of the solar heat from the summer isn't great. You might only get 10 to 20% of that energy back, but it's free. And it's free energy that, even if it's 10 to 20%, is over a long period of time, way longer than the winter. And the daylight is way longer than the winter. So it's double, maybe triple the amount of heat that you can inject into the system in the winter from the spring, fall, and summer. Okay, now we figured out how to install the system into the ground and how to insulate it and inject heat into that system. So how do we draw that heat out and cheaply? There's a few ways. The two that I've tried is a radiant heat floor and a radiator with a fan behind it. The radiant heat floor is by far the most efficient. Now, most people think you need to pour a concrete floor to get a radiant heat floor. 
But for a greenhouse, you can dumb it down and make a radiant heat floor cheap like I did. First, you attach a taco pump to one of the hot water lines from the geo earth solar battery coming into the greenhouse. Then you just add three to four inches of sheet insulation on the ground or aircrete, whichever you have access to that's cheaper. Then add two to three inches of sand on top of that. Now the sand is for your PEX tubing to sit in. And once you have that laid out, you can add concrete sidewalk blocks on top. If you use sidewalk blocks, this gets very affordable as people are always selling or giving away sidewalk blocks on Kijiji or Facebook Marketplace or the like. And it's repairable, very easy to do as you just pick up the sidewalk block to fix any leaks. Now, all you need is some kind of thermostat that can turn the water flow on and off when your sidewalk blocks hit a specific temperature. The fan on a radiator is even simpler. You can get a car radiator, attach your heated water lines to it and put a fan behind the radiator. You attach a thermostat to the fan, turning the fan on and off as you need heat. Easy breezy, quick and sneezy. Sneezy? Wait a minute. Anyway, you know what I mean. This system of geo battery isn't as good or fancy as the geothermal heating system with a heat pump. But ROI, return on investment, is massively better. A typical geothermal heat pump furnace is in the 10,000 range installed. In fact, I just had a guy come here telling me that he replaced the furnace heat pump for his geothermal system in his house, and it was over $10,000. This system that we're talking about here, a solar geo battery heating system installed, is thousands and thousands of dollars less than that. Okay, it's not as precise as a fancy-dancy geothermal system, but you could make it fancy with a few more dollars. So now I'm going to get a pile of comments from geothermal heating system installers about how I'm wrong, this will never work, etc, etc. It's never been done. But this system is working on a large scale right now for homes in Drake Landing, Alberta, a 55 house community heated exclusively for over a decade now by a large system that works on this principle. And Drake Landing isn't the only one. There's several other communities in Europe that have done the same thing. So this works. I've just offered it on a simple down version designed for a greenhouse and garages. When you think about the installation and long-term cost of most other heating systems, this solar geo battery system is exponentially more affordable and all around and probably the best choice to heat a greenhouse in climates like mine. As you have to use a properly insulated greenhouse, of course, to use this like a Chinese or passive solar design greenhouse but the amount of money you're going to save versus heating with wood or oil or electricity or propane or natural gas and this system is phenomenal if you have a system like this or know of one please tell me in the comments below and don't forget to hit like and subscribe with the bell because that tells youtube what you like so YouTube can send you more suggested videos like this, or the YouTube algorithm isn't going to know what you really like, and it's just going to serve you up more Kardashian videos. Now, think about it. We all don't want that to happen. See you in the next video.